Okay, five more uh, algebra questions to answer. So let's have a look at question one. Remember, uh, have a look at the questions, try them out first, and then uh, come back and look at the answers. And then there's uh, two more on the next page and one final one on the final page. So this question, we're asked to work out the value of t, and we're given the expression x squared minus 6x. And we're told that x is equal to minus 7. Now we've got to be really careful, especially for using our scientific calculators on this. Because if on your scientific calculator you tap in minus 7 squared, you'll get the answer minus 49. And that is wrong. Because what your calculator is doing is actually being smart and is doing the squaring first. It's using bod mass, doing the power first, getting 49, and then find the minus of the answer. It's not what we want in this case. Okay, So be very, very careful of that. So if you're using your scientific calculator, um, make sure you're entering everything correctly. Really, we want to find the value of t, so we want to find out what minus 7 is squared. That's minus 7 times minus 7. And then we want to take away 6 lots of x. In this case, it's minus 7 as well. So I've laid it out like this, so it helps me to work out uh, each bit individually. Minus 7 squared is plus 49. A negative times a negative, and minus 6 times minus 7, well, 6 7s are 42, one minus sign will make the answer minus, the other side, a negative sign, makes the answer positive. So really, when you're doing 49 plus 42, which is 80, 91, okay? Now be careful, if you try to do that straight in your scientific calculator without using brackets, you wouldn't get this answer, and you would lose marks. You would get the answer wrong. Question 2. Similar thing, except we've got a different expression. We've got to find out p this time. x is negative, and y is a positive number. So let's go through. p is equal to 4 lots of minus 3. And again, I'm using brackets, so I don't get confused with my negatives. Take away 3 lots of 5. Again, I would work out each bit individually. 4, four times 3 is 12 but it's 4 times negative 3, so it must be minus 12. 3 times 5 is 15, but because we've got one negative, makes it minus 15. So when you put those bits together, minus 12 minus 15 is minus 27. Okay, check you understand that. Go back and look through it if you need to. Let's look at the next set of questions. Okay, some general algebra practice here. We're just asked to simplify this which means we've got to collect all the bits that join together. So remember that the plus belongs to the 7, that belongs to the Q, this plus belongs to the 3, which belongs to the P, and this minus belongs to the 2, so it's minus 2Q. And there's an imaginary plus in front of the 5Q there. So let's connect 5Q up with 2Q, or 5Q minus 2Q, 3Q. Oh, my apologies. We've got a 7q there as well. So this is why you've got to be careful. 5q plus 7q, and they're both positive, makes 12q. Take away 2q, makes 10q. Then we've got p, which is a different type of thing, just 3p, which belongs there. Part b, we're asked to factorise. Now this word factorise means we want to get something into brackets. So we need to find the biggest numbers and letters that goes into both 6x and 18y. In this case, it is 6. And then for that to be in a bracket, well, we need 6 times x to get 6x. And we need plus 3. Now, that would get us 18, but we want 18y. So we must have a y here as well. We can just check back in our head. 6 times x is 6x. 6 times 3y is 18y. Similar set of questions here, standard algebra, expand these brackets, 3 multiplied by everything inside the bracket, 3 times 4x, 12x, and it's going to be a subtract, 3 times 2 is 6, or you can think of it as 3 times minus 2, which is why I've got minus 6 here. Another factorise, another put back into brackets, the opposite or inverse of expand. So I need to find all the numbers and letters that go into both of these things. Well, 2 is the biggest number that goes into 4 and 6. There's also an x here. So that both things have to go outside the bracket. I know it's going to be subtracted between. 
and I think how can I get 4xy if I've got 2x? Remember I'm multiplying. Well, 2 times 2 is going to give me the 4x. I need a y. That's going to give me 4xy. So the first bit's OK. Second bit, I need a 6x, a minus 6x. When I've got the minus, I've got 2x, so I must have to multiply that by 3. Just a quick check. 4xy here for the first part. Multiply the second part. Minus 6x. What I want. OK, let's move on. Last question. This is a little bit more challenging because you're having to remember some facts about straight lines. Now, we know on a straight line, straight lines equal 180 degrees. We know that. So straight lines equal 180 degrees. So it means this angle and this angle are going to be 180, and this angle and this angle are going to be 180. Now, in this case, we're going to assume, and I think it's assumed, it's not really clear in the question, we're going to assume that this line is parallel to this line. Now, if these are parallel, it tells us that a couple of these angles are the same. It actually tells us, from our F rule, it tells us that that angle is the same as that angle, and also that this angle in orange here is the same as this angle in orange there. So we know that these two... Well, we could either do it one way around or the other. We either know that this angle is also 3x in orange, or we know this angle is x plus 40. OK, doesn't matter which way around, but you know that though two, two of them have to add up to 180. So we can write an equation out. We can make an equation or create an equation. If we add both those angles together, 3x plus x plus 40, it must equal 180 degrees. And now we've got a simple linear equation we can solve. We did this in one of the other videos. We can collect these bits together. 4x plus 40 must be equal to 180, just collecting the x's up. Well, if I take away 40 from both sides of the equation, 4x is equal to 140. And then I need to uh, divide both sides of the uh, equation by 4. So x equals... 140 divided by 4. Well, we can do that. 140 divided by 4, let's halve it and halve it again, which tells us that x is equal to 35. Half is 70, and half again is 35 degrees. We can check. We could check this answer, right? Because we could put it back in here and check these add up to 180. Well, 3, we got our answer at 35 degrees. 335s are 70. Uh, 105 and 35 plus 40 makes 75 and those two two do add up to 180 so we're correct remember you can go back and look at some of the videos again look over these or if you need to remind yourselves about the equations look at one of the other videos